Most designers don't like table. However, a table is just a title and a cell. You make a component set out of these. And here, I just want to have a fill that is black at 10% so that we have a bit of a background difference. Then the only thing that you need to do is this. This is your columns. So if you want to do column by column, you do that. And if you want to do that a bit differently, you can do row by row. That's your row. Select the second one instead of title, you say sale, duplicate. And now you have base thing and I'll row by row. I lost you. Let me start again from the beginning. When you arrive on Figma, you are prompted with this new interface. You have the layer list that is on the left, the tools on the top section. You have the inspector. It will change depending on what you have selected. If I create a rectangle, you can see that here the elements have changed and here the elements have changed. And now I have a layer that is called rectangle. If I do T for text and I type hello, you can see that this is different than this. I have one more element here on the inspector. I get nothing about text because it's not a text element a lot of that text because this is a text. So this is the base thing that you need to understand in terms of how Figma is, is presented. Then you have in your tools, you have your basic arrow, but you also have the scale arrow. That's something that comes later. Frames and slices, you have rectangle and all of the other things. Lines and arrows are useless. Ellipses are useful. Polygon stars and images. These tools you won't use often, but you can use them. You have the pen tool. If you already used design tool like Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop or whatever, it's basically the pen tool, it's the exact same thing. Then you have the text tool. You have this new shit that I hate, but it makes sense, but I hate it. <laughs> have the hand tool to move around. If you have a physical mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to move around. Like you click the scroll wheel, you can move around. In the inspector right here, you have elements that will be related to specific types of layer. But if I press F for frame, I create a frame here. You can see that my tools here and my tools here different than this one. This is just a rectangle and this is a frame. In a frame, you have the ability to create auto layouts, add a layout grid to set frame, the option to create components, components of reusable blocks. I just created a component from this hello text right here, which turned it basically into a frame containing a layer, right? Frame here, layer there with the text inside of it. So you can see the icons are different. This is a regular frame. This is a component frame. This is a layer inside of the component frame. It's purple. And this is a regular layer outside of the frame. If I were to put that rectangle inside of that frame, Right here, you can see that it moved from underneath everything to inside in the tree, inside of the frame. If I create a, a text layer and I click on that at the top, which is called create component, you create a main component. To create an instance, you either do a command C or control C. You paste that somewhere, but just create a duplicate and that's an instance or you use the Alt key and you click and drag and it creates a duplicate and it gives you an instance. These two things are instances of the same component that is here. As you can see, I can change the text. <laughs> here, if I type hello, only the ones that didn't get the override from me have the text that change. If you want to undo an override, that is a good question. Let's say this one, we move to thin, and let's say this one, we change the color to red. You have multiple options. You can either select your instance and click on that button, which will reset all changes. It will just change my color. However, if I'm on here and I do that, it reset the text and the style of the text. That's the base thing. You can also click on your element. I select the layer that I want to de-override. Here on the inspector, it tells me this is based on that component here. 
So, here I have a, an instance option. In here I can reset all changes or reset field. This is the only two things. However, on this one, I have reset text and reset textile. If I were to select this and change my text color to blue, or let's say a bright blue to be visible, and I select this, I have reset fill, reset text, reset textile. Anything inside of a component instance, if you select a specific layer, you will have the override available based on the layer that you have selected. Reset field, text line. But let's say instances still needs to be blue, still needs to say instances, however, doesn't need to be thin in terms of weight. If I say reset textile, we'll just go back to the regular black textile, meaning that now, if I change this from black to medium, everyone is impacted. But this is the base of components overrides and component instances. Talking about auto layout, when you are selecting a component, you have a property tab above everything. We don't need to talk about this, but let's say we want an auto layout frame around that text. So we click on the plus, you can see that this frame resized itself. And now if we go into these, you can see that element is 74 in width and that element is 56 in width. And we are not selecting the text, the text is inside. I'll just add like a fill behind everything, make it red and I will make that 20%. Once I have them enabled, you can see that I have some pink thingy. <laughs> I don't exactly know how I need to call them. The hug come from the fact that now we made it an auto layout frame. If we get rid of the auto layout frame, meaning that they all have 74 by 15, because this text layer is 74 by 15, and we made a component from that text layer. But as soon as I add the auto layout thing, which is either clicking on that plus or clicking on shift and A, it moves to hug because my auto layout property, you can see them, that pops in right here. I, they are in hug, which are the properties that are here. It's either fixed width or hug content. And in height, it's either fixed width or hug content. If I select my element inside by using the control thing, which is command in my side, I have hug, but I also have fill container, which is another property that we didn't see before. Fill container is basically flexbox, if you understand that, the element will resize itself to fill the space in said frame. This section will give us the direction in which the elements inside will stack themselves. Then you have the spacing in between the elements. That's when you have multiple things inside of the same frame. And we'll see that in a second. This is where your elements will be stacked. Here you have the horizontal padding and vertical padding. If I click on this one and I press 8, we now have 8 pixels or 8 points on both sides of our elements. And if I do the same thing here, we now have 8 on top and 8 on the sides. And these handles right here give me the ability to just change something. If I do option at the same time, I move both. And if I do control option, I have all of them. You can see that my instances are impacted by my changes. If I change this to hello, the box resize to hug the text. This is the base of component instances and auto layout. If I select my component text right here and I press command or control D to duplicate, you can see how the element is stacked horizontally because my auto layout stack is an horizontal direction. If I move it to a vertical direction, from here I can define the amount of space that I have in between both things. We can go in negative. For this specific element, I would probably go with two or zero. Here you have multiple options. You can stack them 
centered, meaning that you can see that this one is smaller. So it goes in the center of the cell. You can stack them to the right. Center here will be helpful if you do this. Bottom is at the bottom, center here, center. These are just the placement of your elements inside of that specific frame or instance. This is hugging its content. And this is hugging its content, meaning that if we have a text that is longer, it will go and push the frame in its width. From here, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this element is filling the container. Technically speaking, you can see now that on my instance here, my sub is taking the exact same amount of space as this. If I type hello, you can see that the sub is taking the width of the H. As soon as we have the O, it's enough spread across. That's why and how you use the fill container. However, if I were to change that to fixed and resize it, this top section just take the amount of space that it needs for the text and the sub will spread it through. So you get one that is flexible, one that is not flexible. Most of the time what I recommend is everything inside a component that needs to be resized, needs to be filling container. One of the benefits of that is, let's say you have a longer text. You can see how now my cell has resized itself in height. If I resize this to here, a one-liner, and if I resize it smaller, have a two liner or three or four or whatever but the content by filling container will take the space that is available this is what you need to understand if you want to have a component then to create a table when you have these you have the ability to create another component based on this one so this is these add fine option when you click on that you will see it creates a dotted line around your components you have this thing that is already highlighted that is a property because we are trying to create a table this second one will be the cell i will call that cell i just want to move that around make sure that you take the component variant group and not what's inside because if you do that you remove the variant group from its parent you lose any option that was related to that file. Just do that. Let's say our cell has two lines as an option and our title just need one line. We can get rid of sub because all of our instances are title at this instance. We can or we see that this is removing the sub part. This is my component title. This is my component cell with a subtext potential. The thing that I know is my title will probably be bolder than, than my text for the cells. I just make that bold, so that makes sense. Here, because we are basically on the dark mode, I wanna have, instead of having my red here, I wanna have this in a, a dark background for titles. Here, we want our cells to be a bit lighter than our background. What I will do is use white and make it 8%. That's our title and cell. If you have this, you can now select both of them and press either Command or Control C to copy them or use the Alt key on your keyboard and or Option key if you're on Mac and just click and drag and you will see that you have two new instances, one with the title, one with the cell. And they have no override whatsoever, so I can get rid of these three. They were just for presentation. If I say it's row base, create another one next to it, and if I say it's column base, just do a shift A. And now I just need to select the first one, click shift, select the second one, do shift A, or add another layout option, which is the plus B. If you are just starting with Figma, get in the habit of right after this doing a control R to rename the thing that you just have created. This is my header and on this one, this is my column. You can see that the icons have changed. So this one 
is a column and you can see that the icon next to it is a column base and this one is a row and you can see that the auto layout is horizontally stacked. When you go back to the auto layout thingy here, you can see that this is a vertically stacked element, meaning this icon. And when I click on the header section here, I have an horizontally stacked element, which is this icon. And I do the same thing here. And I do Shift A, and that's my row. So I have my header and I have my row. Meaning that now, if I need a new column, I need to select both elements and I just do a command or a control D to duplicate. And because they are both stacked into an auto layout frame, they will resize accordingly. And on this one, if I just want more element, I do a command D on the cell and that stacks the element because they are part of that auto layout frame here. Now that you have this, these two are separated rows and if you are in a table you want to stack your row to each other you can add an auto layout frame around these shift a on my row in column now this one is a table naming it table instead of set table so if we press if you press enter it will select everything inside i have my header and i have my row let's say i select my row and i do command d i have another row i do command d and i have another row you get the id now I have most of my content that is done, most of my content. I have one that is row based and one that is column based. Technically speaking, this one has four columns and this one has just one. So what I will do is just move this one here, duplicate my columns, move them next to it. And once that's done, I can either select both of my columns, do a shift A, rename that table, and let's do ta table column that way we know which one is which this one rename it table row just adding with command d control d to duplicate the columns so we have this right we have our column based table which is pretty simple here we have our row based table but now if we have something that just doesn't exist let's get rid of the sub you can see that the cell itself is resizing to the content that is inside, which is one of the setup that we defined. Meaning that now we have, because it's a row based thing, now we have a bit of a gap right there. And if we do the same thing on this one, because it's a column based, the gap appears to be at the bottom. But we have one element that doesn't have the thing that we need. However, if of the element of said row don't have the sub, then everything will stack up. That's the first thing. We can also define that the cell itself has a fixed height. And that way we don't have that at the bottom. We'll just use these two, go back into stroke, add a stroke. Let's make it white. Let's make it 10% opacity. Here, let's customize that with a zero on the left, one on the right zero on top and one at the bottom giving us this angle here and now it's a clean table the thing that i want to do is depending on the type of table that you want to have i want to create a component based on my main elements on that table on my column table i want my column to be a component and my row thing one of my row to be a component so let's do that from here you can just say create component and that makes as you can see it makes a main component right here what i will do is i will just do a command d so let's create an instance take my main and move it just outside of it that way we have like our main component it sets everything here it's outside it's good being that now I want to have my five columns based on this instance. I just duplicate my instances, select the column that were previously made, get rid of it, and it's fine. The same thing here. I want this to be my main component. I duplicate it. I take the main over it above that we have our row here. I duplicate the rest and I get rid of these ones 
So for the titles, they are not linked to my row component, so they are not part of the instances. What I need to do is duplicate one of my rows that are part of the instances, press enter to select each of the cells, which are instances of that component here, from the property panel, move that to the other instance, the other variant from the variant group to title. And then here, get rid of this one because this one is not needed anymore. So let's say I'm here and on my table, which is column base, I know that my second row needs to be taller. If I resize this one, you can see that all of my instances underneath it, the second row is resizing itself. And I know that my cells could be wider. I could go in everything, select everything, just resize. You can see that my table is now flexible based on the main column that is here. On the row based, if I wanted to have my second column to be wider, I can just use that to extend my second column or make it split. But it's this is where the confusion will come in. When you create a column base table, it is meant to be easily for you to adjust the height of each rows. And when you are creating a row based table, it is helping you to adjust the column size depending on what you know that you will have to do in your table sometimes it's easier to have a row based your row based is for columns your column base is for rows if i resize that thing anything inside don't adjust to the resizing in order to have the cell resized to the column width I need to select everything and make them fill the thing. By doing that, my main right here is impacting everything. However, I can just go back in, resize one of them, resize the rest. And this one, because it has an override, as we saw earlier, it doesn't change its size. That's one thing. However, now if I get rid of the sub right here, it fuck up everything. In order to avoid that, I need to go back here, take everything instead of hug, I make it fill container, and now everything have the same height, or I make them fixed, and now they will always have the same height. On the raw version, it's basically the opposite. You take everything, you make that fill container, and instead of hug, you can make that fill container as well. If I did that, have this one and I stretched and now we are basically good. So let's say we want this one to be wider because they are all filling container, they all resize accordingly. That's a very flexible jelly thingy. Is that too much information in one go? Yes, probably. But basically, in a nutshell, that's how you create that's how you create tables by hand. Yeah, no, something that I need to say, if you are just starting, never use lines, never use arrows, the tools that are named lines and arrows, never use them, they are useless, never use groups, never use mask, that's all. These four features, useless, they will just bring you pain unless you know how to use them. Groups are absolutely useless when you have auto layout frames and frames are used less when you have auto layout frames. Basically, take the habit of using auto layout frames for everything. And when you need to have a line, use a rectangle of one pixel or two pixel in height. And the only line that I allow in a way is the pen tool line because you are creating a shape that is not bound to a straight line straight or diagonal line. Anything that is straight makes no sense to use the line tool because it's fucked. As always, if you enjoyed what you say, please click the follow button if you haven't already. If you have, you can join the Discord. That's appreciated as well. We share articles and more tips in there. You can also follow me on socials if that's the thing. If you are a sub, this is the raid message for subs. If you are not a sub, this is the raid message for non-sub. Murder is actually just 
chatting and she's curling her eyelashes from the preview that I have. We'll see what that's about. And, and yeah, thanks a lot for being here. As always, I will be back tomorrow at 4.30 this time, 4.30 p.m. UTC, and uh, more design stuff. So if you have more questions, please come back tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Eat something, drink something, all that. I will see you tomorrow or the next time. Bye.